Welcome to another exciting episode of the Business of Digital podcast, featuring your host, Matt Siltala and Dave Rohr. Hey guys, excited to have you on another one of these Business of Digital podcast episodes. Uh, today, we got a special treat for you, but for before I jump into that, let's make sure we got Dave over there. Hey Dave. I'm going to catch him off guard because I like doing that to him when he's on mute. I'm on somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. You watch my mute button. Um, but we actually have a treat for you guys today. We would like to welcome uh, Mike Blumenthal, Professor Maps. Uh, thanks for joining us, Mike. It's my pleasure as always, Matt. You know, um, we were talking about uh, how long it's been since uh, since you and I have been in the same place hanging out, and and it's crazy how like time just uh, flies in this industry, and 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 it seems like it's been so long. So uh, I'm excited to to have you on to to chat about some of this stuff. But uh, before we get into that, I just want to let everybody know that Mike is the co-founder and, as he puts it, chief delegation officer at Gather Up. Uh, which recently sold, and I would love for you to maybe just you know share a little bit about that and and uh, how things are going for you, and then uh, we'll just jump into it, Mike. Sure. So Gather Up was sort of my fourth or fifth, sixth business. I lose track, uh, <laughs> but uh, it obviously it was founded in the reputation space as a customer experience tool in 2013 with Don Campbell and Thomas Ash, and Aaron Wyke joined us soon after, and it was a it was a work of passion for all of us but it turned out to be a successful profitable growing company and it just blows um, me away that you said 2013 it just doesn't seem that long ago yeah we, we rolled it out at local you advanced uh, as a beta in march of 2013 and uh, just you know we've ha just had such wonderful support from people in the industry people outside the industry and it's evolved to become a a great tool that really helps businesses improve and that's really one of the things that's pa that that i'm passionate about i've been in both failing businesses and successful businesses and uh have some one great failure stories <laughs> if you ever want them but um but it's just nice to be in a business where we can actually help other businesses improve and so uh asg alpine software group acquired us in november uh we're Very part good. part and parcel of a i think a seven pieces of software that are all in the uh, marketing tech area and uh, I'm still working there as is Aaron and still have a lot of fun. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that and congratulations on that by the way. That's I love when, when stories like this happen to good people. So Well, thank you. I, you know, it's yet to be determined whether I'm a good people, but we're, <laughs> we're working on it. Well, I've known you for a while, so that's my take. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Well, um you know, people are, are here listening to this podcast and they, you know, uh, they're, they're going to want to know about Google My Business, of course, since we're chatting with you. And so uh, maybe you could start us off by talking about some of the new um, th new releases or the new things or the just the new techniques that people are using to do better with Google My Business or or whatever you, you want to lead it into. And I know that you and I were going to have a discussion about images here shortly. So so let me position Google My Business in the bigger picture of Google Search, if you don't mind. Awesome. Uh, yeah. um, Google My Business and Google Local has long been the canary in the coal mine of entity search. It started long before the knowledge graph came into being, and it provided Google a template for how to create entity-based algorithms, and it was sort of the first major area of people, places, and things that they rolled into the knowledge graph. And it has become, it, we see trends in, in local search often before we see them in general search. You know, uh, Rand Fishkin is talking about zero clicks uh, as Google stealing your traffic. We've seen that in local since 2013, 2014. And the other, so that's, you know, we've, but from a local point of view, we sort of see zero clicks as not a negative thing. But what we do see is Google sending 60, 70, 80% of local businesses leads. And a lot of that is happening right on Google, where the person stops right then and there and makes a call. Google is playing into that with what they call immersive search. This is what I call the rabbit hole. When you're in Google Local, you start going in and perhaps with a general query or a location query, you find three or four businesses, you start comparing them, you go in, you start asking questions, Google answers the questions right then and there with review content, for example, or they start showing you beautiful photos, or now they're moving into what I call transactional search, where they're actually providing the ability for the customer to complete 
the process reserve a table at a restaurant yeah, or buy tickets for day, a museum. Yeah. So they're moving from this, you know, uh, immersive search where they're trying to keep the user at their site into transactional search um, and, and then using imagery to sort of help people compare, contrast, and uh, understand a business along with reviews. So that's sort of the big picture. And this has been evolving for the last two or three years, four years, as they've refined the business, what they call now the business profile, the knowledge graph for local businesses. So that's sort of the big context. In that, you know, reviews and images play a huge role, so. Uh, yeah, well, let's, let's talk about that because, um, you know, when we were chatting before we started recording, um, you know, I thought I, I found something interesting. And, and since you talked to me about how, like, you know, you've you've done a lot with images and it's exciting right now with with local search and whatnot. I thought this might be interesting, but or you may know about all this and you, you can set me straight. But it was something, you know, because I I've recently been working on some local stuff for a, a friend um, and, uh, you know, won't get into all the details, but but here's the gist of it. So. I had my DSLR and I took some really nice pictures of, of some food for them. And then I've also gone several times and I've, I, and I've uh, taken pictures just with like my regular phone. And obviously, you know, the DSLR, it's going to take some more high quality pictures, better pictures. But I thought it was interesting that um, over the last uh, little while, I've been getting notifications from Google talking about how my picture is very popular and it's very high quality. And... And it's only the ones that I've I've taken that with the DSLR, and it's not like uh, showing me any of them that I've done with the uh, with the, you know regular phone or whatever. And I you know the, the images are good too because phones these days are really good. But I don't know if it's something with the quality um, or just how it looks because you know I do strip it down and upload a, a web friendly version of it, so it's not that it's like high resolution or anything. And so I don't know if you have any thoughts on that or if you've seen stuff like that, but. Um, you know, maybe you could share with us uh, what what your thoughts are with, uh, you know, what you've seen with image search. And I, I you know, and I, I think it's neat because like they're being found like, you know, because of these images, it's showing you the data. And I don't know how accurate the data is, but like thousands of times and for a new business is getting that exposure. It's great. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I, yeah, I've been taking, I am a local guide at Google. I am one of the suckers that sort of contribute to Google Maps. And I have images that I took from a diner in New York City that has been viewed several million times. Oh, wow, that's uh, awesome. Clearly, Google is, clearly it's a popular diner. It was in the financial district. And clearly, Google moved my image up to be very visible in the, the scheme of things. Um, so certainly, I think Google is capable of ascertaining quality. You, you, we've even seen new guidelines uh, come out. Uh, they came out last fall for the types of images they're looking for. You know, they have to be clearly, they have to be clear. They can't be hazy. They have to only have less than 10% of the surface area covered with text. Um, so they do have the ability to understand quality more or less using their AI. Even more interesting to me with the use of their artificial intelligence and images is they understand photo content. So for example, if you do a search for earrings, Williamsville, New York, uh, it will show local businesses and it will show the images that they've uploaded of earrings. If you do the same, uh, same search but modify it for engagement rings, Williamsville, New York, they will show engagement rings instead of earrings for the same local search results hmm. or roughly similar local search results. Yeah, so not cool. only is Google able to understand the quality of image, they're able to understand the semantic content of an image. Wow, that's fascinating. That's crazy. That is crazy, and it's amazing because <laughs> come a long way, man. <laughs> it has come a long way, and they've added. Last fall, they added a new feature called Search by Photos, where it actually resides below the is a local search uh, interface that resides below the pack and below a few organic results, where it's much more like Instagram, where it's a highly visual search result that um, is image based, and so you you. It's rather than well, text-based. That that brings up a question that I, and I think that this would be fascinating to hear your response on it because, um, you know, because you keep talking about how Google seems to be switching towards like more of an Instagram type, um, you know, uh, platform with serving this up and making it easy for us to see or consume. And so it got me thinking about how, well, in local, especially with restaurants and things like that, a lot that I've dealt with, 
the reasons that I follow these guys on social media, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, is because, you know, they'll tell me, hey, we're sold out today, don't come by, or here's our special of the day, or hey, we're offering 10% off to vets today, or whatever. Like, I can go to those places, and I can see those images, and it's very easy for me to use those platforms, and I wonder if almost Google's trying to do this to compete with that traffic, or to steal some of it, or they see that that kind of stuff is happening with local because you know when i'm working with this group right now that i'm working with you know one of the big things that i talk to them about doing and and, and trying to help them succeed besides setting up the google my business and getting all that optimized and, and set up correctly and all the other local places obviously that you do it's being active on social and letting people know that hey here's what you can come and do and and here's the images of this you know, delicious new dessert we're putting out today or whatever it might be. And so I don't know, maybe just some thoughts on, on, on that. So Google is, as you know, a very competitive company and local has always been uh, at the center of the competition that they perceive in the marketplace. So if you go back to 2008 or 2006, when they integrated maps and business listings, they used to exist separately. They did that in an effort to address their two, their two major groups of competitors at the time. On the one hand was the Yellow Pages. On the other hand was the map quests and the Bing Maps of the world. And they used this consolidation of information to essentially out compete both of those large at the time large groups of competitors their competitors have changed over the years but the map interface is at the core of what they're doing in entity search and they're going to you can bet your bottom dollar they're going to compete aggressively so on the one side the far side they're they've done a lot of work in product integration with local where they're competing to some extent with amazon on the other the, on the mapping and the directional side they're competing with apple on the imagery and social and restaurant side, they're competing with Instagram. Um, and you can bet that, that, that they, will, they will battle on all three funds simultaneously in an effort to maintain and, and fortify their monopoly position in local search. When I say monopoly position, when I look at conversions in local businesses and I go in and do, you know, look at low funnel key performance indicators, things like driving directions, click to calls, uh, form fills, messaging, what I see is that Google delivers 90, 95% of those low funnel conversions and 70% of them are occurring directly on Google. So they're going to defend that position against all comers and Instagram is a comer. So the answer is yes. I like that. So, um, you know, Dave will, Dave will probably um, kick me if I don't answer you this because, you know, obviously when we get into these, the conversations, they take their own directions, but, and it's awesome, but I know that um, one of the things that, that we get asked a lot, and I think that this is going to be an important question, is, you know, there's obviously, you know, 101 and 201 level type uh, dealings that people have with Google My Business, but um, I guess I'm just going to steal this one and, and ask the 201 first, you know, the higher level stuff, simply because, um, I don't know, it, it, it's something that I'm in the middle of right now. When you're dealing with a, a business, a local restaurant that has had like, one or two previous or even three or four previous owners in that exact same spot and you're claiming those listings and you're trying to make sure everything is up to date and and the other businesses are deleted and no longer i don't know if you have any tips or anything for business owners that might be listening to that how to go about that properly or if there's any tips or anything that they can do to make it easier on themselves well to uh quote a famous uh actor forget about it <laughs> I, the the beauty of entity search is that Google that uh, nap confusion no longer confuses Google. Oh. The whole idea of nap consistency came out of an era that was pre knowledge graph, where Google would rebuild the world every six weeks, and if you had confusing data, their rebuilding techniques would cause that data to conflate, so you might have you know, these sort of hybrid listings, half one business and half another. And the whole idea of, of nap consistency that was originally posited by myself and David Mim was to, an effort to control the output of the machine. 
that was Google. But since the advent of the knowledge graph, which is really more of a database, once you have a solid record that Google trusts in the database, it takes you know uh, an act of uh, tremendous effort to get that to get that confused. So I just did a case study in a small local restaurant that was the fourth restaurant at that physical location in the last five years. So tremendous nap confusion. They had no budget, so I was doing this for free. And I left the issue of cleaning up all that nap for a later date. I used a Google My Business website because they had no, no budget. All they had was a Facebook page. And we were able to achieve tremendous success just by building out their Google My Business website, building up, doing Google posts, adding the menu, getting a few links, adding great photographs, and totally ignoring the question of even building citations, let alone dealing with nap confusion. And the nap confusion, I can guarantee you, given that they were the fourth restaurant at that location, was significant. And yet it, it didn't hold them back. Um, and so to me, there's concrete proof. And also from a theoretical point of view, the knowledge graph being more of a database structure theoretically is more stable than them rebuilding from a web scrape every six months, the local entities. So this, the idea of NAP consistency is one of those sort of pieces of dogma that came out of the early years that became monetized by companies like Yaxt and Moz, but is no longer really at the core of a local search marketing campaign. And I wonder if a lot of it has to do with, because one thing I noticed with this uh, uh, business, that this restaurant that I've been helping is um, there's been a lot of people that will go in on Yelp or Google or whatever platform they're using and put that, hey, this business is closed. And I think so a lot of the hard work is probably done by people like you and me or just not you and me as marketers, but just, you know, as uh, consumers. <laughs> yeah, and Google is very good at at both soliciting that information and updating their their list of businesses to reflect reality. There isn't anybody who does it better than Google with their, you know, they have a hundred thousand, I don't know, hundred, what did they say, 90 million local guides wow. who go around the world updating their database. That's a lot. They, they, you know, they have their tentacles, their scraping tentacles looking everywhere. So if a closed uh, indication occurs at Yelp, Google knows it fairly quickly. Um, so yet yeah, Google does a great job of closing and they also though, more importantly, from a technical point of view, don't have the problem of merging, uh, two disparate listings, even if they were at the same location, they understand that they were different and one's closed and one's opened. So it's a change in technology as well as an acceleration in their ability to understand the real world. It's both things. You know, I'm really glad that you shared that that case study or that story, though, Mike, because I'm going to give you another one with this restaurant that I've been working with that um, confirms, you know, even more, I guess, uh, two or three witnesses, they say. So this is another witness for you to know that that is the case, because you mean my personal witness isn't enough. <laughs> I mean, for most people that know you, yes. But, um, but uh, yeah, I, I took that exact same approach with this business. And it seems like Google has figured it all out. Like I didn't focus on, on citations. I didn't, I just focused on the basics of getting them everything set up correctly. And the only thing that I can see that Google's still lacking on a little bit of is they have a 360 photo that I can't get rid of and that I'm trying to get updated to their new sign. But other than that, like everything everywhere has, has been updated. And I took basically the same exact approach that you did and so that's uh that's fascinating for me to when you say a 360 photo you mean a one done by an agency or google street view isn't it? i think it's google street view one that's right. just in so there just as a note they've sort of privatized street view and if you reach out to me afterwards i can put you in touch with some uh agencies that do street view that can get you you have to pay for it but they can get your up street view updated uh because Google isn't driving around as much. Gotcha. Well, that's, that's interesting to know. Thank you. So, um, Dave, you say uh, that, you... but I just saw a Google car the other day in LA. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Google is certainly still driving, and particularly in high traffic yeah. uh, areas. But out in the boonies here, for example, where I live, very difficult to get a Google update. In fact, I was working with a hotel in Siem Reap, Cambodia, very popular tourist spot. I couldn't get Google to go there. No way, no how but uh, a local uh, 
Google photographer was able is able to go in and, and get that updated. So. I just laugh at those because uh, in my neighborhood, I happen to be uh, stopped checking the mail. And when you go through my neighborhood and you do the 360 where you drive through and stuff, there I am next to my uh, my Yukon. <laughs> I, anyway, I just thought that was funny. But Dave, um, any uh, any questions for Mike? I know we're we're pushing the 20 minute mark here, but uh, that's I would all love, good. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is basically the the Google My Business image talk, um, which I think is cool because, you know, Matt, what do you you kind of take some photos from time to time? We all know a few, um, yeah, now in there, a few a few thousand per day. Um, I Come think, on. <laughs> well, so there's agencies that do the uh, street views, which is interesting because I've heard people and I know some people that do the inside ones, but I hadn't, I didn't know, and I didn't even realize that you could hire an agency to do the external one to update it, which I think is cool. Um, but I think Mike, what would be some of your other tips for the hope is, especially for, I'm um, thinking like a hotel or a restaurant, um, where you can have different, different photos that may show up that you really appreciate. So someone might be, you know, like a little influencer and really wants to take this cool photo and then they put it up there for you. And then there might be someone that decides that that burger they got, like the one I got the other day at my favorite place out West that just looked like a mess. You really don't want that kind of showing up as one of the top five photos when someone is scrolling through. Um, even if it's a high quality photo, it might not be the, the, the look you want to give. Um, for an owner, what would you suggest other than hiring, I mean, you know, hiring someone like Matt, what tips could you give them to just optimize their images to show up in the Google search, Google locals, um, or just give a better experience? So it uh, depends a little bit on the vertical, but certainly regular photography, fresh, current, high quality photography, regularly uploaded is, is step one. Step two would be to think of the photographs semantically, i.e. in broad product or service categories to attempt to reflect it. I mean, Google Image AI can, we uploaded some images of a lawyer around a table. We uploaded other images of a lawyer in a courtroom and Google was able to ascertain that the courtroom images were a lawyer in a courtroom with their AI tool. I think that's fascinating, right? So think in terms of uh, of semantic imagery, imagery that describes the broad categories of what you do. Obviously, quality is very important. There is no reason you can't report consumer images from within the GMB. So if they're either outdated or poorly done or unreflective, you can report them with some chance that they'll be taken down. But I think the best strategy is a proactive one of keeping your images current. Now, as a note, in the restaurant world, if you do Google, do Google post, those images from the post will flow into your images, uh, general image category. So one way to kill two birds with one stone is to do Google posts with great images as those will then flow into your uh, overall image, you know, uh, attributes. So, but I think, you know, you have to realize that images at Google are one, they're providing semantic information for search results, but they're also, about conversions and i think you have, you have to realize that the images you have on google are probably the most seen images of your business in the world and consumers are going to make down and dirty quick decisions assuming it's not a life-threatening you know thing they're looking up they're going to make those quick decisions on google based on how you look compared to your competitors and i think images are one of images and reviews but images are one of the ways to distinguish yourself from your competitors the other is is reviews and i'll uh i'll, I'll shoot you this uh, in a separate email mike but you'll love to hear this uh, with that said because there is a um i go to a, a certain uh, lodge in alaska every year and uh, i took a picture um of of uh, the area and on tripadvisor um this image and on google too it's the the most viewed image and they've had people call them in or people call them up to book the trip and say I saw this picture on Google and because of that, I wanted to book like they've flat out said, I, because of this picture, I'm booking this trip because I want to see that. And that was a picture that I took and I'm like, well, where's my cut? But that's awesome. But <laughs> Difference between a real photographer and just sending someone out from your 
office or restaurant or, or hotel just to take a quick, you know, half hour photo. Yeah, and I really think that is. when you look at the cost in a local situation, you could bring in a professional photographer a half day and it just isn't that expensive and they can shoot hundreds of images that can last that business six months or a year in terms of regular posts to Google. And I think that it's one of the best investments that a business could make in terms of local search marketing besides hiring Matt or somebody else to do their local SEO. But, uh, but well, I I've told this company, I, I'll work for scones. They, they sell scones and I'm like, you can just pay me in scones or lunch. <laughs> yeah. Well, my case study, that's what I work for is lunch. And uh, I'm a sucker for a diner where they call you hun. Yeah. Uh, and then, and give you too much gravy on your French fries. Maybe that's just a Western New York thing. No, no such thing as too much gravy on anything. <laughs> Well, I know that uh, we're, we're pushing the limits of uh, keeping you longer than we should, Mike, but do you have any final uh, thoughts or anything uh, wrapping up in regards to Google My Business or images or anything that we talked about before we uh, close here? Well, I would like to just cover what I think are the four basics of ranking in Google. Awesome, Having a, yeah. a great website that has great internal links and describes what you do and where you do it. You know. Um, clearly having a fully filled out Google My Business. But then in terms of what's the difference makers, reviews, inbound links, um, and photographs are the difference makers. So once you've got the basics of a business, Google My Business and a good website, you know, then I don't think it's rocket science doing well in local. It's an ongoing review campaign, reviews everywhere. It's not just at Google, it's reviews at all the sites that relate to your business as well as your own and your own website. And then it's a few inbound links. It doesn't take a lot in local to win at that game. And then some great images. I mean, to me, that's a winning formula in local. Boom, right there, solid gold. I hope people were listening. And I know that Dave's probably gonna put that in text format on the blog post when we, uh, when we get this live and uh, ready for everyone to listen to. So uh, I just wanna thank you again, Mike, for taking time and uh, joining us. Like, I really appreciate it, sir. Well, I'm certainly willing to come back for 201 and 301. Hey, we will, we will have you back for that for sure. So Sounds good. All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening to all those that were on. Uh, for Mike Blumenthal with Gather Up, I'm Matt Sultala uh, with Avalanche Media, and we got Dave Rohr over there with Northside Metrics. So thanks, guys, for joining us, and uh, we'll uh, look forward to having you on another one of these episodes. Bye-bye. Thanks.